All right, so looks like we are streaming live on Facebook. So welcome everyone to our ROV, Raising Our Vibration Global Meditation for April. Yes, it is April already, already halfway through April. So welcome to all of you who are joining us through the Raising Our Vibration community, through Enlightened World Network, and those who are live with us on Zoom. Today, Stephen is going to guide us in accessing the multiverse. So he's going to guide us in a practice of flexible attention. So expanding and contracting and stretching out our attention in various ways to kind of loosen up any restrictions or any um, solidity, any ways that we get kind of stuck in a limited perception. So this meditation is a great way to kind of loosen the boundaries of perception and open us to vast, boundless awareness. So with that as a brief intro, I'm going to pass it over to Stephen and make sure you have a comfortable seat for meditation and you're in a quiet private space and enjoy the meditation. Stephen? Kevin, thank you. And thank you everybody for joining us on this beautiful day. So I'm, for, for some of you, I am in the future because I'm here on Easter Sunday. So I'm ex extremely present to the fact that, you know, in the celebration of, of the resurrection of Jesus right across time and space, that that might be something you consider as we go into this. Perhaps there are wondrous figures and great beings across you know, the eons that you've wanted to connect with. So this is the meditation to do that because this meditation is boundless in that sense. So I'm going to challenge you in terms of your own boundaries to go beyond what you've ever thought was possible. So what is accessing the boundless multiverse? So just for a moment, this is all about going beyond concepts. So what's the multiverse itself? So you might consider this as a world full of endless potential. And many of you live in the multiverse already. Many of you are accessing these multiple parallel universes that, that spin in synchronicity. So you're aware of the gifts and the uh, abilities and, and powers and wonders and miracles that can happen when you access the multiverse, just as we're going to do today. So there's a possibility of alternate, powerful, multiple and different versions of ourselves existing all at once. So all these possibilities exist simultaneously. Many of you are aware of that now as we're speaking, you might be aware, oh, what if there were multiple versions of me? What if I've never considered that? And for many of you that have, that have, you'll be able to access these and work with me as we go through these different possibilities. So timelines unfold in the multiverse according to our choice. So it's the ultimate potential for this moment where everything is everywhere all at once. So just consider that everything is everywhere all at once. So the purpose of this practice, this meditation we're going to do together, and it really is a collective, right? In this sense, I'm you and you're me. We are all each other. We're all assisting each other. I mean, there's a tremendous collective presence that happens when we gather together like this. And especially in light of the events that are happening in our world, we can actually bring our collective presence and this collective infinite possibility to bear on our world, on this physical world, and actually assist it in quite remarkable ways. So the purpose is to shift from our ordinary sensory awareness into boundless awareness. And we're going to use the power of our flexible awareness and our lucid lucidity as a means. So what this, mean, what this means is that we're going to use shifts of flexibility in our practice. And this could mean anything. I'm going to surprise you, <laughs> in, hopefully, in the practices that you'll do everything from expanding size or changing speed and being aware that this is awareness of awareness. What you're doing is you're aware of the infinite capabilities of how you can open the capacity for your experience. And this often involves things you've never conceptualized before. So I might suggest something 
that you've never ever considered. So go with that. So flexibility and lucidity of being and awareness represent qualities of consciousness that we can absorb into and ultimately develop skills around. So this is really important, developing this skill of flexibility and lucidity. So flexibility and lucidity itself are both portals through which we can dissolve our habitual and egoic sense of self to realize boundless awareness. So the more flexible you become, the more open you become, and the less egoic or self-limiting you become. So this realization liberates you from all limitations, all of the confines of egoic consciousness. You can simply rest as a limitless being. So anything that's restricted and solid, we can change into being open and spacious. So you want to challenge in this practice the very boundaries that restrict you. So the purpose of these practices is to integrate this lucidity and this flexibility of awareness with every moment of your life. So this is a really practical meditation. You want to actually bring these practices into your everyday life. You want to actually integrate them so that you become more flexible, more lucid, more clear. So we begin to let go of this heavily conditioned way that we have of ordering reality, right? You're perceiving everything at the moment. You even may be looking at me. Try not looking at me. Look, look at, feel into the space around your computer, for example. And just consider the absolute immenseness and limitlessness of your being. So we have a way of conditioning ourselves, right? Our lives seem to be unfolding in a particular way, and we think that that's that. And we make strong assumptions, have strong opinions and judgments of ourselves. So we make meaning from all those opinions, all those stories we've created of ourselves, and we get trapped in delusion. So this flexibility of awareness, this lucidity allows us to break free. And then in our meditation, as in our everyday life, we can be flexible and lucid and shift rapidly in our states of awareness and accommodate and embrace any experience whatsoever. So in the... Mother Tantra, which is what I'm using. So these practices have come to me through the blessings of lots of ancient lineages. So as many of you know, I've studied Dzogchen and Mahamudra and Tantra for many, many years. And many of the practices that Kevin and I do with raising our vibration are drawn from disciplines right across the ages. So one of those is what is known as the Mother Tantra. And that lists 11 categories of experience in which the mind is usually bound by appearances. So I want you to consider this for a moment as I go through them. So we're going to recognize them, challenge them, and transform them. We're going to shake your world up. <laughs> so the principle is the same in all of them, but it's helpful to spend some time just contemplating how we might be introduced to these possibilities in our own mind. So the basic categories are size, so shifting size, quantity, so lots of yourself, <laughs> quality, Right, the quality of your experience, the speed, you know what happens when you speed up and slow things down, accomplishment, transformation, so I'll explain them as we, or I'll guide you into them as we're going through them, emanation, so multiple bodies, or light bodies of yourself, journey, seeing, encountering, and experience itself. So as we go through these experiences, just see if it's possible to go with whatever comes up. Don't, don't worry if it's right or wrong. Just Go with whatever comes into your awareness and work with that. So if you have a meeting with Christ, just go with that. Allow it to open up. If you suddenly find yourself as the Buddha, then go with that. So it's important to dismiss absolutely nothing. So just dismiss nothing. Let whatever arises arise. It's a bit like so using that metaphor of a resurrection. It's literally like that in your consciousness. Whatever arises, whatever resurrects, whatever comes up, just accept it. Be open to it. Don't be like doubting Thomas who pressed into Jesus' hands and said, are you sure? <laughs> you know, he just said, look, look, I'm here. So treat your consciousness like that, like the risen Christ, that your consciousness is actually rising and resurrecting anew, and that all of this is fresh. So especially when it feels even a little odd or uncomfortable, just go with it. Just see if you can notice whatever arises as a curious observer. So to begin, as we've done before, if you've been part of our practices, 
and without changing anything at all, lightly close your eyes. Now you can do this open-eyed, of course. So um, I did this on retreat with the wonderful Tenzin Wangyal Rinpoche. So you can do this eyes open, eyes closed, whatever. Some people do visualize or see more easily with their eyes open. So whatever is right for you, do that. And take a moment to be still now and check in inside. And as you check in inside, notice your posture. You're just making friends with your body to begin with. Just check in with your body, check in with your posture. Using interoception, notice how you feel in your current posture. So really settle, allow your body to relax and shift position. And always do whatever you want. Your body's here to help you. It's like you want to have that stretch or open, or feel really, really relaxed. Some people think they've got to sit dead still, but in fact, it's all about getting to know and developing that relationship with your body first and foremost. And then let's, let's refresh some of the interoceptive practices that many of you have done with me. So first is grounded presence. So check your soles of your feet firmly on the ground about hip wide, maybe parallel to each other, however they feel comfortable, and awaken sensory awareness in the soles of your feet. So really relax and soften your feet and your toes, feeling as if they're melting down into the ground underneath you. Feel the grounding presence of Mother Earth in your feet and legs. As empaths, you might feel deeply into the Earth right this moment, and the fact that the Earth is being pummeled in different parts of the world by mankind, by stripping its resources, by bombing it, by all sorts of other things. So feel into the this presence of the earth beneath your feet and give the earth nurturing and kindness too. She needs it. As much as she nurtures you, she wants your presence and comfort and care too. So bring that deep sense of our collective power, our collective light into the earth and help heal her too. So feel this grounding presence of Mother Earth now beginning to flow up your feet, your legs, up through your thighs, your hips, into your belly. And then feel into your hands. Your hands are placed in your lap or wherever they're most comfortable. An easy way to do it, an easy mudra, the mudra of equipoise, is to rest one and the other with the tips of your thumbs touching lightly. And soften and relax your hands, feeling as if they too are melting down into your legs like liquid light. There's a sense of open and limitlessness that you can feel just in the hands. And as your hands and fingers relax, allow your arms and shoulders to soften and relax too and release any tensions in your neck and shoulders. So soften your hands and fingers so they're light and fluffy like cotton. Your hands become so light and soft and sensitive. It's as if you can feel a sensation of air, of openness in your palms and fingers. Allow your neck and head to relax and soften. Allow your back and chest to open and relax and soften. You notice I'm asking you to relax many times. The key is relaxing, resting back. So really relax. Rest. Allow your abdomen, hips, legs and feet to relax and soften and rest. Now allow your whole body to be relaxed and soft, like a cottony cloud floating in the open, clear, blue sky. You're like the sky when you're like this. You're just simply open and clear. Now check with your posture and imagine a string is attached to the top of your head, drawing your spine gently upright. It gives you this feeling of vertical spaciousness up through the core of your body, up through your spine and through the top of your head. Tuck your chin slightly, lengthening the back of your neck. Soften and relax your tongue. 
tongue is a really good chicken. Right? It really helps you to sense into this calmness and relaxation. Feel the peace and calmness in your tongue. Notice how it feels to sit more upright. You might feel more alert or awake or intentional or focused, empowered, clear and open. So now feel the sense of calm happiness through the Buddha smile or the Christ smile or the Magdalene smile or the smile of Kuan Yin. Really feel this calm happiness in you. Call to mind somebody or something or a pet, any Thing, a tree in your garden that you're grateful for. Just the simple joy of being alive and breathing with someone you love or something you love. And smile a subtle smile of the mother of compassion or the Buddha of love and feel this positive emotion of gratitude in your heart. Feel calm, happiness of gratitude. Really soak in and absorb this feeling of calm, happiness and peace. And imagine, feel the Buddha smile or the Christ smile expanding from your heart to infuse every cell in your body. It's as if every cell is a Kuan Yin or a mother of compassion. You can feel it expanding now into the environment to touch each of us around us, to all beings. You can feel it touch each person in this group, to me, to Kevin, to Ebi, to Anne, to Ashina, to Bill, to Diana, to Catherine, to... Lisa, to Natalie, to Patty, to all those who couldn't make it, to all those beyond that, all our communities and families, we touch all of those with this beautiful calm, happiness and peace. And then we send this calm, happiness and peace from our heart to all our cells. And then those cells radiate, begin, expand out to the world. And then I get out to many worlds, out to worlds in all dimensions. And then drop your awareness down and into your lower abdomen and begin to breathe deep, slow, kind breaths in your lower abdomen. Focus deep down into the lower abdomen. Be aware of the chi or prana or life force here in every sensation of the breath. As you breathe in, feel the gentle expansion of your abdomen. And as you breathe out, feel the gentle relaxation inwards. See if you can allow this pattern of breathing love or peace in your lower abdomen to happen naturally. And just let go. Surrender to the sensations of breathing peace or love in your lower abdomen. As you're aware of the in-breath, imagine, feel as if you're breathing calm, happiness and love into your lower abdomen. You can even silently say calm or peace or love as you inhale. And as you breathe out, imagine and feel as if you're breathing calm, happiness and peace or love from your lower abdomen out to all your cells. Again, as you breathe out, you can say happiness or love. Breathing in calm, breathing out happiness. Breathing in peace and breathing out love. So extraordinarily simple and effortless and easeful. Smile the Christ smile, the Magdalene smile, as you enjoy this feeling of breathing peace and calm, happiness and love.
And now to lead us into the multiverse, we're going to do a practice of devotion. This is a practice often called Guru Yoga or Deity Yoga or Christ or Buddha Yoga. So you're going to visualize you or feel yourself as an extraordinary being like Mother Mary or Kuan Yin in your heart. So a feminine presence. Take any feminine deity, guide, mentor, could be your grandmother, could be Yeshisogyal or Isis. So whatever you connect with could be an archangel, a feminine archangel, an opening simply to the feminine limitless light. Have you feel that? I want you to feel that in your heart. Some people visualize, some feel, whatever is easiest for you. Feel that you're the source of all love, the mother of all, and that you're brilliant and transparent and absolutely clear of any obstacles or obstructions like clear light. So I want you to feel this with depth and confidence in your heart and know that you're indivisible from this love and light. And then connect also above your crown with the divine masculine, with the Christ or Amida Buddha or Padmasambhava or Hatha, any of the great presences, the divine masculine. And again, feel that connection, this love in the heart to the wisdom above the crown. Again, you might visualize them as actual beings or simply as limitless light, or you might feel them as an essence. And you as this feminine essence, this devotional essence, this feminine presence of light, for example, as Mother Mary, you can feel this incredible devotion you have towards Jesus, for example, or that Kuan Yin has to the Buddha, her own guru, Amitabha Buddha. So feel the joy of that union, that connection, and that devotion, as if it were your own. You might relate this devotion to someone that you have a deep devotion to already in your life. So feel the importance and the profound nature of your relationship with this mother of compassion in your heart, and with the father of wisdom above your crown, however you want to relate to that. Mary, for example, was both a mother and a disciple of Christ. So Jesus had this deep loving kindness and tenderness towards his mother. So really feel that. It's really quite moving, so deeply moving. If you needed somebody to rely, to know him, to embrace whatever was happening to him, it was her. And that's the mother in all of us. This is the mother in all of us with the capacity to embrace every thought and every feeling we might have, as if they are our own children. So when we feel ourselves as Mother Mary or Kuan Yin in our heart or Christ or the Buddha on our crown, our devotion becomes naturally enhanced and you might feel it right now like a stream of blessings flowing in through our crown. The crown becomes like this holy chalice or a receptacle of devotion to all these lineages that you're part of, to everything that's sacred in your life. It flows down through your crown, into your brain, into your throat. Mary never doubted Jesus for an instant. Kuan Yin never doubted her teacher, the Buddha. So in the same way, your total unshakable devotion makes you a perfect vessel for the precious liberating power of awareness to go beyond, to be limitless, just in the same way as Mary or Christ or Kuan Yin or Buddha is. Just as you can be. This simple practice done with an open heart with deep and pure devotion, can guide you to attain perfect realization, absolutely clear recognition. Because ultimately, there's no difference between your devotion and your realization and Mary's or Kuan Yin's or Christ's or the Buddha's. 
by visualizing feeling ourselves as Mary or Kuan Yin or another wisdom being, our deep devotion creates this auspicious connection through which we can receive, just like Mary and Kuan Yin, all the blessings, all the teachings, all the practices, and all the attainments. So be a mother of all, just like these mothers of compassion. Dismiss nothing. Embrace all your thoughts and feelings, all your perceptions and experiences as your children with the deepest compassion and kindness, with the gentlest affection of a mother. Be open to all that is. Be open to the flow of love. Rest back into, relax back into, surrender into, be open to this flow of love, this infinite opportunity to embrace everything. Love and compassion have no limits, no limits, no edges, no boundaries. You are so deeply loved and you so deeply love. So now as we dive deep into the multiverse, I want you to consider size. So whether you're Mother Mary or Kuan Yin or some other limitless being or whether you're limitless light, I want you to consider size and transformation of size. First, I want you to change your size to become as large as a mountain. So you're like a deity that's as vast and large as Mount Meru or Kailash, or another sacred mountain. You're vast. Allow yourself to feel or see or sense yourself as large as the largest mountain. And then I want you to become as small as an insect, still being this goddess or this deity or this light being or this pure self. Become as small as an insect, tiny. So now you're looking up at that vast mountain, which now to you looks like an enormous And then in your tiny hand, take a small, beautiful flower. Take whatever flower appears. Just allow what arises to arise naturally. Might be a beautiful flower, like a pink flower with white petals. It could be very simple. It could be a rose. And now make that flower as large as the sun. So enormous. So vast. It's beyond this world that you can see it all around. This enormous, beautiful flower as large as the sun. Now we're going to allow awareness to guide us into quantity. So I want you to allow yourself to see a mentor or a guide. This could be your grandmother, father, mother, friend, spiritual guide, guardian. Could be Krishnamurti, could be the Archangel Michael, could be any being from across space or time. I want you to allow whatever arises just simply to be present. And then I want you to increase the number of the being that arises in front of you. So that there are now 100 Krishnamurtis or grandmothers. And now 1,000. And now a million. Right across the earth. 
they keep expanding in quantity and then right right across the cosmos keep expanding where you think there's a limit to your ability to expand these numbers go beyond that using awareness go beyond and then to quality I want you to consider what you're feeling right now. Perhaps it's great love or perhaps it's joy or peace. So if you're feeling the quality of love, see if you can intensify it. So if you've got millions of Jesuses around you, then you feel a lot of love or a lot of wonder. See if you can deepen the quality, savor the quality of that feeling. And then if it's love, see if you can change that love into joy, just a boundless joy, or and then into peace. Notice the subtle shifts of quality. Savor the shifts of quality if you drop into a really deep, all-abiding and eternal peace. Notice how you can shift so subtly and so easefully and naturally. Just rest for a moment and savor the quality of whatever feeling is present now. It could be great pleasure. It could be great wonder. It could be an incredible bliss. Could be a simple peace. Just rest as that. You're developing freedom and flexibility, free of any conditioning. Now come back to that just one being, whatever, whether it's grandmother or the Buddha, and find yourself in a beautiful natural environment with this person or this being or this limitless light, just wherever you are. So we're going to work with speed. I want you to slow down the experience until each moment is an entire world. It's as if you can see the subtle movements in this forest or mountain area, wherever you are. You can see every single moment. You can catch the wing flight of an insect or shifts of light or the differences in every sound or the subtle shift in every feeling. It's so slow that it embraces a whole world. And now shift your speed to embrace hundreds of places in a minute. You might shift from a forest, you know, maybe in Costa Rica through to a mountain area in the Himalayas, through to the city like Paris, through to your own home. Is it a hundred places in a minute as fast as you can? London, New York, Tokyo, Sydney. Keep going. The only boundaries are the boundaries in your imagination.
And now let go of that and rest for a moment. No judgment, no opinions, just simply resting. Now into accomplishment. Whatever you've been unable to accomplish in your life at this moment, try accomplishing it. Perhaps you have a meditation practice you wanted to dive deeper into. Do that now. Maybe you wanted to write and publish a book. Do that. See what the book is. Watch yourself writing the pages. Look at the title. Look at the chapters. Perhaps you wanted to swim across an ocean. Perhaps there's something right now that needs finishing. Notice what it feels like to accomplish this, to finish it. Notice this feeling. The felt sensation is so crucial. And then we're going to go into other accomplishments. The Mother Tantra recommends that you ask your guardians for help whenever you're confronted with a task that it seems like you cannot accomplish. So now consult your guardians. Ask your guardians for help in looking at any other tasks that you'd like to accomplish. Maybe there's things your guardians want you to accomplish that you've never even considered. So ask your guides or guardians. And then work with them to finish what needs finishing. And get them to help you with tasks that it seems you cannot accomplish by yourself. This could be anything in life. Abundance, relationships, health. Dealing with obstacles on the spiritual path. Now into transformation. Transformation is important for all of us. Learning to transform ourselves. Learning not to be bound. Trying everything so that everything becomes everything everywhere. Transform yourself into a bird first. Any bird. A beautiful bird. A bird of paradise. A bird of fantail. Feel what it's like to move around the forest, to fly, to eat. Then transform yourself into a dog. Maybe it's even a dog you know, or a cat. And then to a lion. And then into a dragon. Now you can fly throughout the cosmos. If you find it transforming in, into any of these, that you want to stay or rest a while in this transformation, then just rest as that for a few moments. You might find you want to remain as a bird or a dragon. Just notice what arises. Notice what transformations you are attracted to. Notice also any discomfort. Now transform yourself into an open and clear Buddha. And then into a Dakini or a Sky Goddess. limitless. 
This is very powerful for developing flexibility and overcoming the limitations of your habitual identities. Limitless, boundless. Just rest. Just let go. Nothing to do. Just rest. You don't even need to meditate. Just rest. Now in emanation. Notice which you're attracted to, maybe a Buddha or a Dakini. So maybe the masculine or a feminine. Now after transforming yourself now into a Buddha or a Dakini, emanate a second body, a second light body that can be a benefit to other beings. So be in two bodies. You can feel it. Right, there's a tremendous power and opening and being two bodies and now three and now four and try sending these light bodies in four separate simultaneous directions maybe one to assist with the war in Europe maybe one to help refugees maybe one to help children and their education in the country maybe one to help in the multiverse itself where you go to another dimension or another world or a pure realm. Just notice where and what arises. And now transform yourself into many light bodies. Emanate many more. And notice what arises. Where you send them. Break through the limitations of experiencing yourself as a single, separate ego. Now let go, just rest. Now journeying, start with places that you wish to go right now. You want to go to Tibet? Take a trip there. To Paris? Go. Just spend some time there. Where have you always wanted to go? This is not the same as just arriving there. This is about the journey. Make the journey. Guide yourself there consciously with awareness. Be aware of what arises. You're aware of awareness. You're aware of what is arising with an awareness. You can travel to another country or to a pure land or travel to another planet, another star system. Or a place you haven't seen in many years, maybe a place from childhood, or to the bottom of the ocean. Just notice where you travel. Where do you journey? And notice the quality, the essence of your journey. And now seeing. Try to see something you've never seen before. Have you ever seen Christ? Be there at the time of the resurrection. Now you can. Have you ever seen the Buddha teaching? Go there. Have you, have you ever spent time with Dakinis or goddesses? Go and spend time with Isis. Now you can do this. 
Have you ever seen Shambhala? Go to these ancient mystical places. Just notice what arises. Have you ever been to the center of the sun? Or seen your cells dividing in your heart, pumping? Go to the top of Mount Everest. Have you ever seen the view from here? Look at the view. Wherever you're guided, whatever you haven't seen before, you see it. Because now you can. Have you ever seen the view from a bee's eye? Or the 360 degree view of a dragonfly? See the world through your eyes. Be Guru Rinpoche Padmasambhava or Yogananda and look and feel and sense through their eyes. What would the world look like? Try to see in a way that you've never seen before. Make them real. The stronger you sense them, the stronger your brain connects with them as real. The neurons in your brain right now are connecting with this limitless potential, this infinite opportunity. Now encounter in the Tibetan traditions, for example, there are many stories of people meeting teachers and guardians and dakinis and so on. Maybe you feel a connection to teachers of the past. So now, meet them. Perhaps you wanted to meet Christ and Buddha. Actually, meet them. And when you do, right away ask if you can meet them for a second time. Because this will create more of an opportunity to meet them again in your meditations or your dreams or your waking moments. And then... Ask them for teachings. This could be any teacher from the past. It could be any teacher from any realm, any star system, any dimension, across all time and space, and ask for teachings. Notice who presents, what arises, and what messages you are given. And finally, experience. Experience something you haven't done yet. For example, if you're uncertain about your experience of enlightenment or rigpa, ask to experience it. Experience any mystic state, any city, levitating, telepathy, telekinesis, whatever it is you want to experience that you haven't done yet. Experience it. However elaborate or simple, you can experience it right now. Any experience of the path. You can breathe water like a fish. Try walking through the walls of your room. Now that you're outside, become a cloud. And now travel the universe as a beam of light. And then fall back to earth as rain from the sky. And then just simply rest. Rest in this open, liberating 
awareness. Simply rest, there's nothing to do. Just rest. Completely drop all effort, any expectations or judgment about what's happening. Give yourself absolute permission to simply be, to be present, to rest naturally, to rest openly, effortlessly, as this limitless, boundless way. Slowly, very slowly, open your eyes and continue to rest as this limitless, boundless awareness that is simultaneously in all multiverses at once with your eyes open. Continue to breathe as Kuan Yin, Mother Mary, Buddha, Christ with calm happiness with love and with peace. And you, as your eyes open slowly, move your body just a little, feeling as if every movement too is an expression of this calm, happiness, peace, love, vastness and openness. Take a look around and notice the small details of your world as if the walls and objects in your room are smiling back at you with this calm, happiness, love, peace, openness and vastness. As if the space around you is saturated with this feeling of calmness and peace, happiness and love. And as if every moment is filled with the beauty and richness of calm, peace, happiness and love. See everything with the delight and innocence and freshness of a young child. Every moment, you're just simply open to every moment with this freshness and awe. Allow yourself to be this field of vastness, freshness and awe. And recognize that everything is happening everywhere within this pure, infinite, indivisible, timeless, loving awareness. So thank you always for your absolutely boundless, divine, pristine and immaculate practice. So we'll take a few moments now just to be present in these beautiful collective peace and love and wonder. And then I'll invite anybody if they'd like to share or share any insights. It's also absolutely fine to stay silent and spacious and peaceful. <laughs> But if anybody would like to share anything, please feel free.
Et bien. It was quite a journey. It was quite a journey and it made me realize that we have infinite potential, infinite potential. And sometimes it's hard to break the, the limitations, but uh, with this uh, meditation, it's like one way to, to slowly by slowly stretching all our limitations and get expanded. It was a, a journey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Evie. Thank you. That was beautifully said. And yes, it's very much a practice. The more and more you test the boundaries of your practices and your conceptual mind, the more and more you start to open to the, the wonders that every single moment brings. So, yeah, that was beautifully expressed, Evie. Thank you. I'd like to share something if that's yeah, okay. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. um, at some stage later in that, um, when you suggested we talk to someone or ask to be in someone's presence, um, Dr. Usui came to my mind yeah. and I, I asked to be touched by, by him. And then I, I suddenly sort of felt this kind of jerk or something in my body and it was when you were saying what we'd most like to experience, I think. And I just had this flash of being able to reach in to pain or pain or injury or something in an, in an animal and just pull out, like just touch and pull out the pain, whether it was emotional or physical or something. And that was totally unexpected. I, it just came when I asked if I could be touched by him and I just suddenly saw this vision of just reaching in and touching out, pulling out pain or something. <laughs> beautiful. And that's just beautiful. What a beautiful. And I think the wonders of, you know, going to what Ebby was saying about, you know, the practice itself, the practice as you do it will certain really powerful insights just as you've had. The power of connecting to Dr. Sui and that, you know, the jerk of that energy awareness awakening in you, and then you recognizing that you have the same power to pull that pain out of animals or people. You can, when that happens, you know, when you're working with horses, because I know you work with many, many animals. Because uh, for those of you who don't know Anne here, so she's an animal whisperer. So she has tremendous abilities with animals. So if any of you do have animals that need assistance, and really is a, such a beautiful channel for that compassion for animals. And so you, you can bring that same moment that you just experienced here. As you got, you just recall that Dr. Usui touching you, you, you know, what amazing gift you received. <laughs> I, I, I feel so, so blessed and awed by that beautiful gift you just received from that boundless awareness. It's been wonderful because very shortly after this, I have to work with a cat that got got locked it well, got was let resting in the washing machine when it started and with five minutes in a washing machine. And I've been so kind of like concerned, how am I going to help this cat? And I got that, so I'm certainly going to apply that. <laughs> oh, oh, that's magic. That's truly yeah, magic. That, I know. That's so Wonderful. Oh, I can see it in your face. Your face looks radiant. <laughs> Very happy. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Anne. That was lovely. Anybody else like to share? Andrew, welcome. I, I realize because of uh, Australian time, you've come at the other end of the uh, practice, but you'll be able to go back and do it anytime. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it's lovely. So lovely. I just realized that. <laughs> Thanks. Lovely to see you. Bill. Ah, Ebby, Ebby, uh, Ebby, Bill. You can do, you know, oh, Bill, Bill, please. Okay, Bill. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. That was, um, I was looking forward to this. Uh, and it was interesting because it was uh, 
mine was um, when I was welcoming things, it was uh, the natural world, eh? which doesn't uh, surprise anybody that <laughs> knows me. It's a natural world. And uh, I, I could feel a depth of the natural world that was um, included me and that included, like there was no separation of it, the only one, that's all, that's all it was. There was no separate, I, I could contact them or be present with the natural world, but the natural world was, was the same thing as I was, or I was the same as the natural world of the reverse uh, should be actually said because there, there was no separate, there was no difference. You know, Beautiful. so the, yeah, so that, so that was nice. I, I, I really, I'm very much at home in the natural world. So, especially with something like that, where there's no, there's no boundary. This, uh, you're one. You are that part of that natural world. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, so it was nice. Very good. Thanks. Yeah. I'll try it again. I, I have some, some new toys to play with, and I can make the connection now with. <laughs> Wonderful. That that sense of oneness, Bill, you know, you really, you really deeply connect. I know, as you said, for those people that know Bill, you'll know that Bill really connects with the power. I mean, your tree behind you and the power of the natural world. So, yeah. so thank, thank you for sharing. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that one, oneness. And I know different people have asked me, will this, will you be able to revisit this meditation? So this will be on the app. Plus the, the version that I did today will be available on Facebook Live. So you'll be able to find it on Raising a Vibration Community, for example, which is if you if you want to if you want to revisit it. Mm. So Bill, thank you. That was that was beautifully said. Uh Ebby, sorry, back to you, because you were gonna make mm. you were gonna say something. Yeah, I just want to say that there are no coincidences. For me, the practice, today's practice was about, uh, how do you say that? Uh, uh, when you take a limitation out, how do you say that? To overcome limitations. And today in the Jewish, uh, there's a Jewish holiday that it's about the same. It's Passover that Basically, it's the exit of the slaves from Egypt to, to the new land. But the, the principle of this um, uh, festivity is to, to go from slavery to, to freedom. And uh, nowadays, what's, what's the thing that enslaving us or limiting beliefs and many, many things, no? So I saw the, a relation between the festivity and the practice, and it's like just perfect timing. So I just wanted to share that with you. Oh, that's beautiful, Abby. That's beautiful. Yeah, Abby has a lot of deep contacts with masters and practices from a variety of disciplines. So Abby, thank you for bringing that, because it's truly like that. It's truly like that. It's, you, you, you're overcoming the limitations of believing that you're enslaved in some way. And, and actually letting go of those limitations. I, that's a beautiful analogy. Really, really beautiful. Thank you. Kevin, I know you might also have some, because you know, Bill mentioning, mentioning nature and he'd be mentioning about freedom from all limitations. So I know you might have some something to add to all the things that people have shared. Oh, mostly I'm just enjoying hearing everybody's experience. It's it's beautiful to be a part of this community and see how what each of us brings informs the practice. And so each of us bring our own interpretive lens into it, and that shapes what is said and, and the experience that's guided. And so I just it's wonderful to be a part of that. So thank you all for, for being here and participating fully. So if anybody, Ashna or, or Natalie or, or Catherine, Shakti or Patty or Diana, any of you'd like to share anything, please, please do feel free. Uh, Catherine, Catherine and then Patty. Oh, you'll have to unmute. I'll just get you down. There. 
<laughs> I'm just, I'm overwhelmed. I went deeper into heart and peace. I've been feeling that a lot this week. Um, a deeper, profound joy within my field and space and all around me. I got my, all my cells are just kind of vibrating and radiating right now. And it's, it's, it's always wonderful to be in this spot and be able to maintain it longer and longer. Um, the multidimensional aspect, being able to split myself in so many different ways, that was really new for me. <laughs> I've been able to split to a certain degree, but not with that vastness. So that, that was a real gift to receive. And I have issues in my heart that I've been having to heal on relationship levels and just something just clicked where I was able to quantumly just take the cords and tap into all that I needed to in one moment. And I just felt a really deep connection and a, another level of healing. So thank you. Mm. Oh, Patty, thank you. Thank you so much. And Shakti, Kastra, <laughs> beautifully said, Patty. Mm. I followed everything you said, transformed to every deity. And when you were asking where we wanted to go, I took myself to where the places I wanted to do and experience. And I realized that that's the power of manifestation is just to put myself into that future me of experiencing all that. And that's some form of manifestation, seeing me in the future of that place or that, that um, what I want to do or want to be or where or how. So that's kind of like seeing the future me there. And then um, I traveled to many different places, but then I was in the, immersed in the water and the ocean. I was like a mermaid. I was just swaying and deep in the waters and the dolphins came and just swirled around the plate with me and um so now and then I shoot up and the unicorns took me up and I was with the unicorns um but um, through all that um so now I have a dolphin soul mate a friend here that came back with me <laughs> so I've been, I've been giggling and seeing this dolphin just swirling at me and hugging me and all over me now so I'm just like this burst of giggling joy so I have the dolphin soulmate friend of mine came back with me <laughs> so I'm like giggly <laughs> just can feel it coming to me and tickling me and all around me now <laughs> so. uh, that is it is so sweet it is really you know it's, it's, it is so you know speaking to what Anne shared with us it's so powerful right the inner experience of what happens what what patty was saying that she felt you know mul multiple emanations that she hadn't felt before the fact that we can feel something that we haven't felt before or that the a dolphin soulmate friend arises literally within our, our inner community within the same you know you um uh, you you, you re reminded me of um an experience that i had some years ago with and it wasn't mine but it was, just shows the power of our inner worlds and connecting with our future self and it was i used to um, do lots of counseling for teenagers who were having, you know, struggling with depression, suicide, challenges in life, every, and so I specialized that in that in, in uh, Australia. And there was a young fellow who really believed his life was at an end and, you know, at the tender age of 14 years old. And it, and I taught it, you know, he'd been to different psychiatrists and of course he was on different medications and he, um, just simply lost lost hope and i talked to him catherine you know just as you rick about the power of the you know the inner world and how we can actually in transforming our inner world like you do you know you do it so naturally he hadn't really considered being able to do that he felt powerless and so 
we worked on this one and this is just the power of manifest you know when i was thinking of your beautiful dolphin soul friend is that he recognized at a, at a certain point of me going through some practices with him that he wanted this particular soul friend he wanted a soul friend just just like that and so he started to work with his inner world and created one and he suddenly realized about i was working with him for a couple several weeks he suddenly realized that the this is kind of the humorous part of the story he realized, realized that his soul friend actually really looked like this girl that he hadn't really noticed much before who was down at his corner store and this was a young lad who never went outside he basically stayed at home and so when he he just suddenly he said oh he said it looks like this person i said why do you ever go to sh no no don't i don't go out i said well why don't you just just take one trip you've got i said you got nothing to lose just go and buy a newspaper <laughs> so he said okay he did that you know after sort of weeks of being at home and feeling depressed because he wasn't going to school wasn't doing anything and so he made this journey and it, yeah so he made he he made this journey and when he got down it, it, this particular girl happened to be there and just mm -hmm. said a few words and he suddenly his whole world opened up I, I was actually so moved. It was moving for me because I remember how he just the few words with another human being who kind of recognized him. And in fact, they became really great friends after, you know, he plucked up courage and he sort of, he asked her out and they didn't, you know, they didn't date flow. They, they didn't work on that level, but, it, but, it, but it, she really wanted to be his friend. So he wanted to be her friend and that evolved. And it was such a beautiful, just the power of the fact that that, in a soulmate, you know, in so many different ways, can literally manifest in ways right before our eyes that we, you know, that if we're sort of saying, oh, the soulmate's got to look like this, you know, and in your case, it's this beautiful dolphin, right? I, I've got really deep connections with dolphins, so I thoroughly, deeply relate to that. And then that manifest, that feeling, that bubble of joy, then manifests in a whole bunch of different soulmates in human form, for example, or, 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 in his case, the girl at the corner store that he he really hadn't noticed up to that point. <laughs> so, it was, uh, yeah. So, thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing. And Ashina, I, I love your comment about you loved expanding to other worlds and beyond. So, thank you. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Um, so, Natalie, Diana, if, just before we wrap up, if there's anything either of you would like to share. Ah, oh, Diana. Diana, thank, thank you. I will, Diana just said, the meditation helped me to see how I can apply this way of being into every experience in my creativity. My experience was with Yeshua. Yes, I, I've so often done this experience with Yeshua. That's beautiful, Diana. We immediately took each other's hands with such love. Before I could ask him if I could come back and see him again, he told me that he was always with me. Oh, so many tears. Oh, I'll feel tears just reading that, Diana. I feel so expanded inside that my skin feels funny. <laughs> oh, oh, no, absolutely. Wow, your words are just amazing there. I feel, uh, I'm profoundly, humbly grateful for this. Oh, thank you. And, and all who are here. Yeah, it's really all of us, right? All who are here in this container and beyond. <laughs> thank you, Diana. That was absolutely so, so beautifully, humbly, wisely expressed. Okay. And Natalie? Any, anything you would like to share in any way? Hi. Can you hear me all right with my, my microphone? Is that okay? Beautifully. Yes. Yeah, Beautiful. great. Um, no, that was, that was lovely. I really, I really enjoyed the experience. It was, um, yeah, very new to me to, to try and expand that far. I, I'm, I'm still so new to meditation that I think there's nothing you know, profound to report, but um, there was little glimpses and I'm, I'm happy with, you know, that amount. So that's, that's good for me. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And, and the, the, the little glimpses can sometimes be the most profound, you know, sometimes it, it's a little bit like my, my story of the, you know, the girl in the corner store for the boy, you know, sometimes the littlest glimpses are actually the most profound, that the subtlest, tiniest 
slip. I always remember somebody who, who I was meditating with some years ago and she saw this little glimmer of light. She'd never ever, she'd been meditating for years. She didn't, she said, I don't see things, I just feel things. But then one day she saw this little glimmer of light and it just suddenly, it was, a, it's like a metaphor. It's like a glimpse is a glimpse and a glimmer is a glimmer. <laughs> so she felt this glimmer and she, she said, oh, and I said, yeah, look how you feel. Oh, she said, yeah, yeah, I understand now what a glimmer means <laughs> because it like literally, literally glimmered. And it, so she had this sense of, oh, she said, I feel like my whole world might kind of fall apart based on that one little glimmer because it was a glimmer that she hadn't felt before. And as you said, Natalie, they're literally glimpses you haven't glimpsed before. Even if they're just like, oh, and it's that, it's almost like that, oh, <laughs> that oh sense of surprise and openness can actually open a portal that you've never considered you could ever, you know, like Alice in Wonderland, go down before. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you do. And you start to recognize it with, with even though they're incredibly subtle, that each of the glimpses has a certain, like a signature, like a soul signature that's that's actually destined for you. It's part of your opening. Yeah, thank you for sharing that profound message about the <laughs> profundity of glimpses. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. I mean, really, your comments and your light and your presence are really so precious to Kevin and I and to all of us. And and this is really collective. You know, I'm I'm always incredibly aware that when we come together like this, that magic happens in ways that we can never predict. And that it's as much our meditation as anybody's, right? It's a real collective presence that brings such wonder and such tears and such magic and such care and love. So, so thank you, truly. And Kevin, I'll hand back to you for any, anything else that might be shared. Well, thank you, Stephen. That was just a magical meditation and just so such a wonderful way to open to new possibilities of seeing and being. So thank you for guiding us into that. And thank you all for sharing your experience because in your sharing, we're all open to new possibilities as well. So everything that everyone shared is really uh, precious to us. So so I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you for practicing with us. Thank you all who are watching on Raising Our Vibration Community and also on Enlightened World Network. And if you'd like to uh, redo this meditation, as Stephen said, you can search for it on the Raising Our Vibration Community Facebook page. Probably just search accessing the multiverse or something like that, and it should come up. And then in let's see about a week from tomorrow it will also be a version of it will be on the rov meditation app so so again thank you all for being here and please join us again next month thank you the third uh weekend of each month we do our rov global meditation and we'd love to see you here again so bye for now bye Bye, bye, bye. Thank you, everybody. Much love. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Nice, nice seeing you all.